right, now we're at step two. This is a knock tuning video, bear shaft knock tuning. You need a couple of things to bear shaft knock tune your bow so your broadheads are flying straight. And I'm gonna teach you how to square up, shoot straight, get everything plumb, and then show you what spinning the knock can do to a bear shaft using my little friend, the Elky Poo here. I'll explain that in a second. Stay tuned. I don't know. <laughs> All right, this is one of those freaking crazy things that Big Mike, the wizard, here's a couple of pictures of him again, the wizard, <laughs> has said you got to do this part. So I have a previous video on how to mess with the inserts and tune the inserts, and I have three arrows I'm doing for Brandon Pierce Johnson. I'm doing a whole dozen for him, but these three arrows I'm not tuning today. I'm at the Archery Club. This is an elk target. It helps to have a very substantial target that won't move around when you're, when you're bear shaft tuning. I'm about 10 yards away and we'll go to the truck here in a second. I put this X on here on that elk just for visual reference. It's not perfectly square and I'm not really intending to necessarily hit there. But when I start shooting, you'll see how the X will show when the knocks come in kind of weird and every time I turn the knock. So the process here is to shoot an arrow bear shaft. You've got the inserts mounted. You've got it tuned. If you haven't seen insert tuning, go to my other video about insert tuning. You get that done, get your inserts glued in, and here we go on the bear shaft. So like I said, this is for reference. You want a substantial target, and that's that. Now, you could shoot through paper. And Mike prefers to shoot through paper. Here's a couple of pictures of Mike's, when he tuned a set of uh, arrows for me, he knows that I'll shoot multiple points. So what he did was he put extra weight, different weighted points on and shot my arrows through paper and knock tuned them that way. And he said 125 grain and 315 grain could do no wrong. And I said, great, I happen to have 125 grain points and I happen to have 315 grain points. This builds more for the common man. Brandon's gonna shoot a 100 grain insert in, an, in a gold tip 300 hunter and he's going to run 150 up front. He's probably gonna run the buzz cut four blade 150 up front, but he's planning to do 150, whether it's single bow, doesn't matter. And most of you out there are gonna run one point weight, one insert weight and go. You're not gonna have a golf bag like me and Crazy Mike who carry, <laughs> you know, six or seven different arrows. We're just considering the fact that it's just for the regular person who's building one set, shoot the same stuff and everything's the same. So I'm gonna shoot his, I've got his shafts built, I've got the inserts tuned per the other video, and then I've got 150 grain points, and we're gonna start bear shaft tuning on my little friend, the elk here. So here we go. Back at the truck, I've just found a couple of things we need to point out before I start shooting. So we're gonna talk about the inserts, and then I'm gonna talk about, look at the knock fit, which I just looked at was interesting. Here we go. So this is just, like I said, I've got these 150 grain points, 100 grain inserts, and there's the insert tune, just like I told you, there's marks on them, okay? You look right there, and you start rolling it, it's kind of inconsistent. That one's okay. That one's pretty smooth. And I got one over here, it's got a couple of chunky spots on it. It's just not the same. I mean, it's just not a, It's not an even cut. Here's decent over here, and then all of a sudden there's this ground off part. <laughs> so I guess the kid with the dip and the big tattoos and the steroids didn't cut your shafts very straight. So we got a solution for that. We square them up just like we did on the other end. All right, we got a plane in the background, some bad shadows because it's real raw results and all that stuff. It doesn't matter. Tell me you artsy fartsy guys can make fun of me, that's fine. I have the knock, you're not really supposed to pull the knocks with your teeth, but yeah, whatever, I have dental insurance. <laughs> Once again, we got the Sharpie. If you didn't see the other video, you'll take a Sharpie and you'll run it around the end of the shaft, which paints it black, right? And you really can't tell that it's, 
it's much blacker and shinier, but nonetheless, I use the Fast Tool from Luminok Eyes. Okay, it's got an abrasive disc on this end. There's the point, part we want to grind, and we're going to square this thing up as a starting point for the tune. So we just spin it a little bit both ways, is what I do. Check the end. And it'll be nice and gray. If you see any color on there from the Sharpie, you need to keep grinding until it gets pretty square compared to the tool. And then that's your starting point for your Nocturne. We've got it squared up. We're gonna take the uh, knock and put it back in. And here we go. Okay, so my first step is there's a knock index here. And I usually run that, what I consider out. So that'll be the away from this string. And then I mark one side of the knock with the Sharpie. Okay, that's the dark side. Doesn't, it isn't showing up because the sun's bleaching it out. But you can see that this side's much cleaner than that side. So I know this side is always going to be up when I'm knock tuning. And when I twist the knock, when it stops, at least I know it's up. If you shoot it this way and then accidentally shoot it this way, you've changed your knock tune. And that should freak out you four fletch guys because you guys with four fletch think you can just flip them either way and you can to a certain degree if you're in a panic situation and hunting but it will throw your knock tune off so you can't really see that the sharpie's on there but it's on there and then we've got the clean side so we're always going to shoot with this side up and then we'll rotate the knock and see the results okay here goes my first shot i've got it i actually got it knock tuned by turning the knock to wherever it ended up shooting straight, I'm going to show you what straight looks like. And then I'm going to turn the knock and show you what it looks like and how much it can change. All right, so here's dead on tune. And the reason why I said I put the X on the target, it's for anyone can do this, right? If you have a target, you can do it. But the X shows me if the, if the knock is high or if it's left or right. And you can see it hit dead on in line, vertical and horizontal. So that's the first shot. And the uh, knock tune worked on this one. So what I'm gonna do is turn the knock and then we're gonna check to see <laughs> what happens. And hopefully something happens. Hmm. Now I'm gonna mess with it. We're gonna take the knock and we're just gonna turn it. So this is true and this is turned off. There's the black mark on there. Like I said, it's washing out because of the sun, but there's, you can see the clean side. So. I rotated at one quarter turn. Here comes the shot and then the result. So the results of this one look pretty good, right? It's right in the middle of the X. Until you get back here and look at where it's pointing. So that arrow is coming in it's pointing at the tire of my truck and I'm shooting between the bush and my truck where the tailgate is. So All right, here's the mark side. I pulled the shaft. Here's the mark side. There's my trued up. That's the tuned mark. And I'm going to freak out all the people who forefletch. And I'm going to turn it completely to the other side of the knock. So there is my good spot. This is the clean side and I'm going to four. This is like a four fletched arrow and I'm going to turn it all the way this way and shoot it with the dark side up. Once again, it's washed out. You see that's the clean side, it's the dark side. Okay. I'm going to shoot it upside down from the Noctune and see what happens. Hit the line. Like I said, we're not aiming for the middle. Looks pretty good. But we'll go behind the target and we'll see that once it's not pointing nearly as far to the right, but it's still pointing to the right, well, my right, right? To the left, however you want to look at that. I'm shooting between the tailgate and that bush, and it came in a little bit to the side. It wasn't terrible. So, you know, I keep hassling about the forefletch. It's not as perfect a way to shoot it, but it appears that if you could turn it upside down on that particular arrow, um, it wouldn't matter on a four fletch terribly. When they put feathers on there, veins, it would definitely mask it. It wouldn't be horrible. Okay, once again, we're upside down. There's the clean side and a dark side. It just wants to get us washing out and you can't really tell the Sharpie's on there, but it's pretty bold when you got it in your hand. Interestingly, this mark that you see scratched off of there, that was the mark when I initially tuned it and it was shooting pretty good until I rotated it just that much 
and it shot a little better. So when you're tuning, you start keep tweaking. So we're gonna, this is our last shot and we're gonna rotate it to this mark. And then there's the perfect mark where it really, really likes it and really tunes out good. So let's see what the results are here. All right, so we have, it's kind of knock high and still kicking a little bit to the side. You can see that. That's why you put the horizontal line on there because it's really shooting a little bit knock high. And then when we go behind the target, it's still leaning a little bit. It's about the same as the other one, but this one came off, it came off a little bit high. So it tail high kicked right off um, the bow and then went into the target. You know, not terrible, but let's rotate it to plumb and see what we get. All right, that is on the Noctune right there. And it is, you can see that the vertical, this is where the vertical line really benefits you because you can tell that the shaft is actually shooting pretty straight. And when you get behind the target, it shoots pointing between the bush and the truck where it should. So I gotta tell you, I didn't really believe in this 18 months ago and slowly slowly over time big mike's been pounding on me <laughs> saying man you got to try this it really helps to have your arrows have the inserts tuned and then go through the knock tuning process so this arrow that's my best shooting arrow and i've got it tuned i've got two more to shoot in they'll take 15 or 20 minutes each to really tweak them so once you get close you start moving it little incremental pieces at a time and one of these two is being bad. I think it might not tune. I, I don't I don't know. That one behaves. I've got one that behaves and then I don't have I have one I know I've shot a bunch and it just it don't like me very much. At the end of the day here's the deal. You need to shoot a lot of shots. Don't trust the first shot. Don't trust the second shot and don't trust your bad shots. Um, sometimes you'll throw one and it'll fly wacky. And then you'll be like, oh my God, my freaking mark is on there and it was flying fun. And now I'm gonna burr, burr, make noises like that. Freak out, have to take Xannies. Stop for a second. And if you shot 600 arrows, maybe you're tired. It takes time, be patient. So I've only got three out of the dozen. I got four I sent him. I've got four I've shot in and fletched last week. And then I'm gonna get these three. This one's done. These two, I gotta play with. Here's the deal. This is, this is the final thing. If you'll do this and you'll get these arrows flying super great, when you get your broadheads on there, they will fly super great and you'll kill stuff. And it just is less frustrating. It's worth the time to spend an hour, an hour and a half per arrow. Per arrow. Rather than standing around shooting 600 arrows a day that are bad. What's better math? I, I hear people all the time, man, I've been practicing for 40 hours, been shooting the crap out of some arrows, and I, I just can't get them to go. I've been shooting and shooting and shooting. Well, what if your arrow setup isn't good? <laughs> That's the thing that popped in my head and why I started doing this is not my deal. I don't like this very granular, you know, boring, dry stuff. But dadgummit, I want my arrows to fly and I want to whack stuff. So you got to decide if you're going to be an adult, especially if you're making adult arrows. Might as well make good adult arrows. Hey, that's the Ranch Fairy. You need to subscribe to my channel. You need to forward this information to your friends. You need to tell them, hey, dummy, maybe you ought to try this. I don't care if you're shooting skeet loads. I don't care if you're shooting 1,000 grain arrows. I don't care if your FOC is 10%, 1%, or 400%. It, it is the same process and application. So if you want to shoot the flappers, shoot the flappers. If you want to shoot adult broadheads and adult arrows, shoot adult arrows. The only thing I've got is, Brandon, Brandon, if one of these arrows doesn't tune out, we may have to put a mechanical on. <laughs> because mechanical solve everything. Ranch Ferry out. Subscribe. Look for me on Instagram, Facebook. See ya.